Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stephanie. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here with us. Um, we are doing some prep for Mother's Day dinner. Mother's Day is tomorrow. Um, our family is gonna do a uh, late lunch, early supper kind of a thing. Um, I'm gonna try to make some breakfast as well so that that's ready to go for in the morning. Um, we have been canning this meat today. So that has been um, come out of the canner that's cooling. And now we're getting started on Mother's Day. Behind me, I have, can't really see it. I have my egg cooker set up back here. And a lot of you guys had questions on how that works. So I thought I would just show you real quick. It's the easiest thing ever. So it comes with this little measuring cup and it tells you where to fill your water for your hard boiled eggs. You can also do a medium boil. That's what I usually do a medium or you can do a soft boil egg as well. Um, you can do whatever you prefer. We're gonna try to make some deviled eggs. That's my plan anyway for tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pour that water in there. Have you guys seen our eggs before? Have I shown you these? They are so pretty. Um, the next thing that you do is this little thing. Let me try to where you can see it it's got a little needle on the bottom of this so what I'm gonna do is take the little needle that's in here and I'm going to pierce that egg I make that face every time I always do and my egg cooker will hold seven eggs so I'm going to I'm gonna do all seven I'll have to do two batches of these and it only takes it only takes a few minutes to do these so I got seven eggs in here. All we do is put this little lid on. Oops, this one kind of shifted. And turn it on. It takes like maybe 10 minutes. I'm not even sure that it takes that long. Anyway, that's just gonna set. Once that is done, I'm gonna put those eggs in an ice bath for about 10 minutes. Um, I'll get them peeled and those are just gonna hang out. I'm not gonna make the deviled eggs until tomorrow, but I'll get the eggs boiled today. Boiled. <laughs> I also set out a jar of squash that I had canned last year. Is this an approved canning method? I have no idea. Um, I didn't, <laughs> when I first got into this, I didn't know that there were things that were approved and weren't approved. Um, and somebody said that, sure, you can can sliced um, squash. And we did it, and we've pulled some out in the dead of winter, rinsed it off patted it dry and fried it. Um, I like to fry it. I like for my mom to fry it in Jiffy Mix. Mom does a much better job than I do on frying squash, but we like it in Jiffy Mix because it's a little bit sweeter than just regular cornmeal. Um, but I'm going to put this in our lasagna that we're making tomorrow. I also printed off all the recipes because while I'm filming this stuff, I have my phone hooked up to the tiny camera because it's easier to see. So, you can already see this is steaming up. Um, I'm going to relocate you guys. We're going to make a breakfast casserole. We might have made this together before. I'm honestly not sure. This is my nanny's breakfast casserole. Um, and I'm going to get this ready to hang out until tomorrow. That way, um, mom and dad usually get up at the crack of dawn. I haven't been sleeping late, but they've still been beating me up. And they... Um, like to eat breakfast a little bit earlier than I do. I like to get up and go in and on with my day and then eat breakfast and they're kind of hit the floor running, eat breakfast kind of folks. So anyway, um, I'll get some breakfast so that it's ready to go. She won't have to actually cook a lot of anything for tomorrow. Um, and I'll bring you guys along for that. We're gonna use some of this sausage that I canned for this. So I'm super excited. And um, yeah, let me get you guys re relocated and we'll get started. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a nine by 13 and spray it. If you forget this spray step, it's not the end of the world. I like to make them in these glass dishes because they just soak with some Dawn and you're good to go. I need to get some ingredients together, so I will be right back. Okay, I think I'm set up here. Um, I have, oh, I'm not ready. I gotta get some bread, but I'll come back to that. I have our canned sausage. I'll show you that up close. I have some butter. I have eggs here. I have some cheese over here and I have some milk behind you guys. So let me do the bread because I can't focus if I don't do that first. Hold please. 
Now, personally, I prefer to make this with white bread, but we don't have any, and all the other adults in this house like wheat bread. But the one thing is, this is the perfect time to use up that heel piece that nobody else wants to eat. Ugh, I don't even, I just don't like wheat bread. I think, is that because I grew up like in the 80s and 90s and white bread was where it was at? I just love plain old white bread. Because we're making this early in the day, it's going to have time to really soak into this bread. So, your bread won't lay perfectly flat in here. Don't worry about that. That's not the deal. Okay. Now, I feel like I have the mental capacity to proceed with eggs. So, I'm going to crack in all 12 eggs into this bowl. I wish that I... I need to use, I need to put them in another cup and then into this bowl. Um, I wish that I could do one of those cool one-handed egg cracks. I cannot. I'm going to blame it on being um, maybe left-handed or have small hands. One of those two reasons is why I can't. Just trust me on that. It's science. All right. As if I didn't have enough crap out on this counter. Now. All right. I just like to do this in case you get an egg with a funny spot. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry about your eardrums. Um, in case you get an egg that's got like a funny spot or a weird yolk or something questionable, these are fresh out of the chicken's eggs. These haven't sat at the grocery store or anything. So, it is smart just to do this. My nanny always wanted me to do it even with grocery store eggs like she was not taking any chances whatsoever um i have a bowl behind me here behind you guys here that i'm throwing these eggshells into and we will feed those back to the chickens they need calcium to produce really strong shells and if they don't have that then we have to supplement with like oyster shells but we just crunch up their eggs and feed them back to them. Oh, there's a shell. Um, we just crush up the eggs. The bread just fell. <laughs> and feed them back to the chickens. And they like it. We haven't had a problem with them really eating their eggs. We did have a we did have somebody that was pecking their eggs. Um, we don't know what was going on with that, but I don't think that's been happening anymore lately. Which is appreciated. Thanks, girls. This is also a great recipe. We have an overabundance of eggs and mom was gonna put the eggs for sale sign up in the front yard. And I said, wait, don't, I need eggs to make deviled eggs. And, uh, but also I'm glad that she didn't because now I have plenty to make this and I have plenty to bring to my friend Paula who needs eggs. She saved, she and her husband saved their egg cartons for me. And every so often I slide over to their house and I pick up egg cartons and I leave them with fresh eggs. I don't do it as often as I should and I'm, I feel bad about that, but, um, I keep telling them, like, just remind me, you guys know me, you know, I'm not, I just dropped that. I was tossing it into, ew, I was tossing it into the compost bowl or the chicken bowl, whatever you want to call it. And it bounced off the rim fell in the floor and landed with a splat on my foot in my flip-flops so that's that's so great it doesn't feel weird or icky at all that's okay i have to wash my hands in just a second anyway so it's all good all right i put in a whole dozen eggs i think i told you guys this before when nanny and i started making this recipe i think we started making it with six eggs and we were like, wow, six eggs is good. Let's go with eight. And then eight was pretty good and fluffy. So why stop at eight and you can put 10. And then if you're going to put in 10, why not put in the whole dozen of eggs? So it really just evolved. Um, you can put as many eggs as you want in this evidently. <laughs> so if we go with 12 now. That's pretty good. Um, I will, um, I'm going to wash my hands and my shoe. <laughs> and I'll be back with you guys. Um, we're going to start whisking this together with a little milk, salt, and pepper. And, um, this is coming together super easy. It's not, it, this is going to be the easiest one I've ever put together. 
when I put the milk in this, you just do this until your ancestors tell you to stop. I'm going to put uh, that much. That was probably between a quarter and a half a cup. I am also going to add in some pepper. This is that pepper that Michelle told me about. This is Marion K Spices. It's made in Indiana. It smells so, it smells so peppery. It's, it's so much um, more than um, like just regular pepper that you buy. I'm going to go in here with the spoon just because I don't want to stick my whole arm down in this bag. Not that I'm afraid to touch it. Ooh, that might be a bit much. Okay. So, salt, pepper, milk. Now, the last time that I made this, I put the green powder in there. I absolutely could. I have. I do. I will again. But, it's Mother's Day. My nanny and I, my grandmother and I used to make this together. And I just want to kind of keep it simple in the way that she and I would make it together. So, we just whisk. I need like some kind of Muzak to go over top of this so that you guys don't just have to sit here and watch me whisk a bunch of eggs and milk. <laughs> but it's what you get right now. You just get me whisking. Okay, that's good. I'm going to set this to the side. I'm going to make a mess. our bread. I need to scoot you guys back a little bit more. There you go. So our bread, we typically would put, I would brown some sausage up and toss this over. Well, I have saved a step because earlier this year I canned a bunch of sausage. I canned, I don't know, like four or five pounds of it. And um, I intended to have this because it would make really good sausage gravy so we could have biscuits and gravy but we're not doing that today we're making the breakfast casserole i need to get a uh a doohickey i don't think this can open oh i think I, this will do it oh i'm so sorry look at that arm shot Ugh. okay well that's dumb and it doesn't work hold please that was actually really perfect timing because when I paused the camera to go get a jar opener, this, this went off. So we are going to get these eggs right in an ice bath. Oh, that's hot. Now let me show you this. You can see how there's some gunk on there. I'm not even going to worry about that because I still have another round of eggs to make. But after that, I'm going to just throw a little bit of vinegar in there and it'll come right up. I'm going to put in a little just splash of vinegar. It'll come right up. Give me one second to get these eggs loaded back up for the second round. I'm going to do uh, seven more just so I have a few extra in case some look wonky or don't peel well. So we're good to go. I've got my water in. I've got all my eggs pierced with our little doohickey and we'll turn that on. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to let these set for a few more minutes. Then I'll uh, get these out, get fresh ice and water in for this batch of eggs. Now we're going back to the breakfast casserole. My friend Becca, I was at her house and I was like, I need to open this jar. And she was like, just get a butter knife. I can't do it that way. I don't know how. Um, I guess I'm a child and I have to go through and actually use a little church key here to open it. Now, with this, um, you see how I've bent this lid? Let me flip a light on here. That might help a little bit. Yeah. Um, you can see how this lid bent. This lid can't be used. You're not really supposed to reuse lids anyway, but this lid is definitely not going to be used. It smells like fresh cooked sausage. So all we're going to do is 
get this fat off of the top and this is ready to go. Actually, I'm going to put it in that. Um, that is actually that fat from the roast that we canned today. Uh, I put it in on top of the stove just to let that cook and kind of render down. And I'll give it to the dogs. I'll put it on there too. This isn't a ton of fat, but if you wanted to make some sausage gravy, I think it would be outstanding. I went outside and I checked the crock pot for the big dogs, the St. Bernard's that we have. It was pretty full, so I just decided I would cook this down for the littles in here. And because this does still have some fat in it, I'm probably going to leave the butter out of this recipe. That's really the only thing I'm going to do different. I'm going to double check and see if there's any juice that's going to come off of here. There is just a little bit pouring out. Now, we are just going to spread this. And this is exactly what I would do if I had browned this sausage and drained it. I would just spread it over top of this bread. But I didn't have to... It's like I said before, I'm making a convenience food out of something that wasn't convenient before because I just decided at the last minute that I wanted to be able to have this breakfast ready for us tomorrow. And if I didn't have this sausage done and on the shelf, I would have had to drive to the store well the dollar general is the closest thing to me and their sausage is frozen so i would have had to thaw the sausage brown the sausage drain the sausage um, and it would have been a whole process whereas now the only thing that's taken up a lot of my time here is just me talking if i weren't doing this with you guys i would whip through it in just a few minutes i literally would have this put together in under 10 minutes and even still with me just you know yammering away not it's not taking us a ton of time we are multitasking with the um with these eggs but you know okay eggs are back we're whisking these again just make sure they're good and blended you can do this with a hand mixer if you want to i really don't think there's much point in that And just pour this straight over. Now, what I would normally do next is I would put a couple tablespoons of butter over top of it. I'm not going to do that because, like I said, we've got this, um, the grease that was from this sausage. And um, that is that's going to be fine. We're not going to need to add this fat when we have other fat that's also flavorful. So I was looking to see if either of these cheeses need to be used up. I just opened that one. So this one, this one is the Fiesta blend. It doesn't matter. Use, this would be really good with like some Swiss or Gruyere. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you could fancy this up. Use like a brioche bread. I think that would be fantastic. That's actually something I do want to try. Um, is to try it with like maybe a challah bread or a brioche bread. I think this is a take on a strata. Is that the word? So anyway, whatever. This is done. This is ready. Um, I'm going to let this sit overnight. At the very least, try to let it sit for a couple of hours if you can. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. But if you can let it sit overnight, that bread just really seeps in or the eggs seep into the bread and it's delicious this also freezes really well i kind of cut um a piece of bread size slice and i have frozen those individually so that i can have breakfast for work i had one the other day um that <laughs> that i had for breakfast it was delicious um, so give me a second to find the lid for this pan we're going to pop this in the fridge and i need to address the eggs before I go back to the eggs and this is gonna backfire on me. Hi guys. Um, let's see if I can bring you up. 
So I really love to watch Acre Homestead. She's one of my favorites on YouTube because she does these marathon cooking days. I mean, she'll spend all day in the kitchen, but she'll make a month's worth of food. And it's just she and her husband. So I relate to that a lot more than people that are cooking for like a family of 37. So she buys a lot of her Pyrex at um, Goodwill and thrift shops and stuff. And then she's got a whole freezer full of Pyrex dishes that she has meals prepared in. That's like my ultimate goal. But I don't, I don't even think that my, like I need a whole nother freezer. <laughs> for that but anyway i'm happy to have this i'm happy to have this ready for tomorrow so i don't have to worry about getting up early and fixing breakfast my mom doesn't have to put in any effort we can just have breakfast ready to go so what we're going to do now is we are going to start working on this strawberry compote or strawberry coulis gonna cut out some of that okay so I've got a compost bowl for the strawberry tops. With these strawberry tops, you can um, you can dehydrate those. Um, if you have pets that like strawberries, give them the strawberry tops, whatever. For this recipe, I need 500 grams of strawberries. Now, did I ask Google how many cups that is? You know I did, 2.11 cups. So we're gonna say around two cups of strawberries. I'm gonna slice, ooh, that one doesn't. That one might need to be eaten by me. It was just a little bit soft. We're gonna cut these big ones down just a little bit. And I have a two cup measure here. I'm gonna just overfill it. strawberries. I wish you guys could smell this because the guy said when we stopped at the store today to get these, we went down to that um, Amish store. I was going to go to, oh no, it's a Mennonite store, but it's an, there's an Amish community right there, so I always say it wrong. But anyway, um, I was going to go to the Amish community if we couldn't find any and see if they had any, but the guy that owns this store, he said that these had really gone fast. Now, I did wash these. I soaked them in a vinegar and water solution. Let them soak. Let all the dust and dirt and debris come out of there. And then um, I, I just let them sit in this colander. After that, I drained them off, rinsed them real good. And then I just let them sit in the colander. But I'm going to make a lemon cake. For dessert for tomorrow and to be fair I have no idea what I was just saying because um, mom came in the dogs all lost their ever-loving minds and then I just sat here and ate strawberries for a while but anyway so now we're making this strawberry coulis the strawberry compote um, all it is is 2.1 cups of strawberries my gosh do y'all hear those things does anybody want a dog I know you can hear them because I can see the micro the microphone picking them up. Great mercy. So anyway, I had some old lemons. I bought new lemons too yesterday. Uh, but I had some old lemons and I thought if I can juice these, I will. And I'll save the others for when I need the zest tomorrow. Um, I just rolled them to kind of loosen them up. Get those juices going. I got the strawberries. I need... Um, two tablespoons of sugar and three tablespoons of orange juice, lemon juice, or water. I'm going to use lemon juice because we are using a lemon cake or we're making a lemon cake. And then somebody said, after you do it that way, flip it over this way and squeeze it again. I don't know if any more really came out of there or not. Um, I have my whole countertop taken up with projects today. Can you guys see this? There is, there's, from the far end, there's canning, there's eggs, there's the stove, strawberries, and then this nonsense. So, um, give me a sec to try, <laughs> trying to get some, um, order to the chaos. This is the egg cooker. I was just rinsing it out. I, you can see where all that um, 
brown was like cooked onto there. Once I took the eggs out, I just put in a splash of vinegar and let it sit. I just now dumped it, wiped it out with the towel, and that was it. There was no scrubbing or anything to it. So this cleans up really easily. And I love that the cord stores along the bottom here. So it's really convenient to just stick up in the cabinet, all the pieces tuck inside. Oh, it's real easy until I try to show you guys how easy it is. But yeah, um, all the pieces tuck inside of it. I'm going to get that put away. Oh, almost spilled my lemon juice. And uh, I got all the eggs into one thing. I'll get those in the fridge and then I'll have more space to work. All right, guys, we are back for this strawberry compote. I just am super excited to make this. So we are going to put in our strawberries, which is two kind of heaping-ish cups or two-ish tablespoons of lemon juice and two tablespoons of sugar. We are going to turn this on. It says cook it on almost low heat. Almost low heat. What is that? Um, and it's uncovered, so I don't need this. We're going to cook this. It says cook on almost low heat for 10 minutes, stirring constantly. And um, while, while this comes up to heat, I'm gonna go ahead and finish loading the dishwasher, get that part of it done. And um, I also have the directions for the cake printed out. So while all this was kind of warming up, I went ahead and I capped the rest of those strawberries. Look how cute this Harry Potter bowl is. Deanna got that for me for Christmas. Um, but so while this is, um, well, while, while this was heating up, I capped those strawberries. So they'll just go in the fridge. They'll be ready for anybody to eat. And this, again, I wish you guys could smell how amazing this is. Um, I've been watching British Bake Off this week. I had never watched that before, but I started listening to the book, The Golden Spoon. I started listening to that on Audible. And it's kind of like a Great British Bake Off and um, Agatha Christie kind of murder kind of a thing. It's set in it's set in America. It's set up in Vermont, but um, it's really really good so far. I super I've really enjoyed it. Um, but that kind of got me wanting to watch it. So when I went to go get my nails done on Wednesday, Kristen and I usually just watch something random. We watched a lot of hoarders. We watched some inmates in prison. Um, and so when I sat down, she was like, what do you want to watch? I said, let's watch, let's watch the Great British Baking Show. And, um, so we turned it on and we had the best time watching it. And, uh, so I'm still, I don't know, I think it's season 10, maybe. I don't know. Whatever's on Netflix right now, that's what I'm watching. Um, but it's got me really wanting to make sure that my cake turns out good tomorrow. <laughs> So we'll come back and check on this uh, coolie once it's set up a little bit more and I'll store this in the fridge until we're ready to use it tomorrow. I've just turned this off. It came up to kind of a bubble, um, but the directions don't say to boil it and it also doesn't say anything about letting it thicken. So maybe I just made that up myself. Um, this is still good. This is going to be delicious. It's like there's literally no physical way this can be bad unless tragedy strikes tomorrow. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this off the heat. I'm going to set it on a wooden uh, cooling pad and um, let this cool off. I am, I am going to sit down, take a break, and uh, rest for a little bit. And then I'll probably get back up and work on... Uh, I'll work on the cake tonight because I want to get the cake done and not have to worry about it tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. We are ready to make a cake. I've got all my ingredients prepped and ready to go. Um, I'm going to start assembling this. I'll take you guys through the steps as I do it, but I'm not going to measure out like the baking powder, the cornstarch, the sugar, all that stuff. I'm not going to, I'm not going to measure that out while we do it. Um, first thing that we need to do is get some butter creaming. So I've got the mixer ready to go because I'm going to let it do most of the heavy lifting on this one. So we have to let this butter cream for about two minutes. Let me try to get a angle without the shadow on there. 
I'm not going to make you guys watch two minutes of cream and butter, uh, but I'll bring you back when we're done with that. This butter looks really good inside here. Sorry, there's that shadow. Um, but yeah, it's just nice and fluffy. Oops. So next we are going to pour in, that was uh, one cup of butter. This is two cups of just granulated sugar. And we have two tablespoons of lemon zest going in. I honestly want every single bit of that lemon zest because I zest a lot of lemons to get two tablespoons. And we're just gonna turn this back on, let this combine. Next, we need to beat in four large eggs. I didn't have four large eggs that were room temperature. I had plenty of eggs in the fridge, but um, I have one large egg and then like three small eggs. No, maybe four small eggs. Um, because even my large egg wasn't super large. So I'm feeling confident about the amount of eggs that I have. Um, I'm gonna pour these in one at a time while they mix. I'm gonna turn that on low and just stir in one. And we're gonna let that get well combined before we add the next one. If you need to stop and kind of scrape down the sides of your bowl, I definitely had to do that here. So if you have to do that, don't feel like you've done something wrong or that it's not working right. It's just the nature of these mixers. Oh, well, those two went in together. Back that down a little bit. After these eggs, after the eggs, we are going to do, in a separate bowl, whisk salt, baking powder, all-purpose flour, and cornstarch together and set aside. I already did that when I was getting my ingredients together. Uh, then it says to mix your lemon juice, milk, and vanilla extract together. Alternately, add the flour mixture and the milk mixture to this butter, beginning and ending with flour. Mix until everything is just combined. So, let me move these dishes that I've dirtied up here, get my milk and my flour over here, and I'm probably going to get a measuring cup to kind of make it easier to divvy that flour in and out of here. I don't know if it's best to have this lifted or not while I add this stuff in, but I'm gonna go ahead and add um, about a cup, maybe a little extra of our flour mixture and get that stirred in. Oh, this is looking really, really good. This is a nice looking batter. I'm gonna stir in some of our milk. I'm going back for a second measuring cup. I thought using this smaller measuring cup might make that a little easier. There's about three or so cups worth of flour and stuff in here. There were two and a two and three fourths a cup of flour and then we had some um, cornstarch and baking powder and all that good stuff. Oops, a little overlap which is fine. Because that milk had to sit with the lemon juice in it, um, it did almost curdle a little bit. You can make buttermilk that way by adding like lemon juice or vinegar to it. So I'm gonna go in with flour one more time. We'll add 
the last of the milk. Now, the last of this flour is going to be messy, so I'm going to turn this camera off while I get the last of that <laughs> into this bowl. That was actually a lot less dramatic than I thought it was going to be adding the last of that flour. Then, we're just mixing everything. I think it's good. It says mix everything until it's well combined. I am going to go ahead and scrape these sides. Um, if you can hear my dad, he's half yelling. He is talking to one of his friends on his CB radio. Or maybe he's talking on the phone. It's a CB friend. Uh, he called him a little bit ago. But, um, okay, that looks good. I didn't get the sour cream ready. I have to just add a fourth of a cup of sour cream, and then this is going to be good to go. Um, I'm going to lick. I'm going to lick this before this is over with. <laughs> So the last thing that we're going to put in here is this quarter cup of sour cream. We're just going to let that combine. This is coming together. Just, it's a really beautiful, it's a really, really pretty cake batter. Um, it's real, it's dense. It looks like it's going to be a dense cake. And it smells lemony even while I'm just doing this, which it has a quarter cup of lemon juice plus that lemon zest in it. So let's scrape this. And get this out of the way and then we are going to stir it just a couple of times by hand just to make sure that it is it's all well combined there's no lumps or raw flour down at the bottom of the mixer this is feeling really well mixed down here at the bottom you guys know i licked that beater like i got a, got a good finger full off of there and then i took it to dad and i let him lick the whole beater after i got a bite with my finger this tastes delicious there's nothing wrong with this cake and all right i need to clean this mixer but i'm gonna slide it back into its home for the time being and i'm gonna get our bunt pan out here to get this ready i've already got the oven preheated so i've got our bunt pan ready can you guys see how cute that's not good view this is a good view look how cute this pan is and this is silicone too so that's going to hopefully help this release really well um i'm excited i'm really excited about it let's get it sprayed to just ensure that we get a good release i don't work with bunt pans very often. I don't make a lot of cakes to be honest. Um, I had taken some cake decorating classes a uh, hundred years ago um, so I do have some of the equipment to do it. That's not a very good view for you guys. Let's see if I can switch. Can I do it with this hand? I'm a little ambidextrous. I just don't I don't know sometimes it's easier for me to do things with one hand versus the other. You can see how thick and rich this is going into this pan. Let me get this loaded up and we'll get it ready for the oven. I had to switch to a better um, utensil because I couldn't quite get the end of this out of there. But you can really see how well mixed it got. And you could do this with a hand mixer. It wasn't it wasn't really labor intensive I, I use the hand mixer for a lot of things too but on cakes and stuff like this I do prefer the stand mixer let it do some more of the work for me all right I don't feel like I'm doing a great job at scraping this bowl but we're gonna call that good So, I'm going to kind of level this out just a little bit. I don't know if I need to or if 
it'll do that on its own. I'm also going to do that, that deal on it to um, maybe get out any air bubbles or help it settle. Yeah, this looks pretty good and even. This is going to go in the oven at 350, is that right? Yeah, 350. My oven runs a little bit cool, so I've got it set on 360. And we're gonna bake this for 45 to 55 minutes. I'm gonna check it at 45 minutes, see how it looks. Um, and I'll test it with a toothpick. If it needs to go back in for another 10 minutes, we can absolutely do that. But I'll show you guys what this looks like once we're done. We got this cake all the way done. It looks it doesn't look as good as I wish it did. I'm really kind of bummed about that. Um, I don't know if it was the mold that we used that was the issue, but it is a little more brown on the sides than I would like it to be. And it cracked. That was my fault because I took it out too early. But it's like almost 10 o'clock. I want to go lay down. Um, we're just going to cut it that way. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's the thought that counts. I know this taste, cake tastes great. Um, and I'm sad that the way of the way it looks right now, but it is what it is. No big deal. We'll get through it. I just, oh, I wish it were prettier. That's really a bummer. And I wish that I had to just set an alarm to get up in a little bit to, um, to get up later and take it out of the pan. Now I'm real bummed. Um, I think it's cracking more as I'm sitting here talking to you guys. So I'm going to go pout, um, by myself.